Ned never knew why he had done such a sly and terrible thing. Perhaps it was fate. Perhaps it was the devil in whom he believed sincerely. He had slipped the book from Ashley Barson Garland's bag, dropped it onto his knees, and opened the first page before he was even aware of what he was doing. His right hand lay on the desk and pretended every now and then to slide backwards and forwards through advanced cell biology. Lowering his eyes to his lap, he began to read. It was a diary. He did not know what else he had imagined it might be. It looked at least four years old. He believed that it was its age that had first attracted him to it when he had seen it peeping from the bag. He had seen Ashley carry this book with him everywhere, and that had intrigued him. Nonetheless, it was very strange that he should have done such a thing. Ned did not like to think of himself as the kind of person who was interested in other people's diaries. It was difficult to read. Not the handwriting, which was very small, but clear and strong. Barson Garland's style was, how should one put it, opaque. Yes, that was an intellectual's word. The style was opaque. With each line that Ned absorbed, the drowsy buzz of the classroom fell further and further away into the background, until he was entirely alone with the words and a vein that throbbed quick and guilty in his neck. 3rd May, 1978, Didsbury. Firstly, it has to be the accent. If you get that right, you're close to them. You're halfway there. Not just the accent, mind. The whole delivery. Note the way the voice comes out of the mouth. Note, too, the mouth's limited aperture, the line of the lips, the angle of the head, the dipping of the head, the tilting of the head, the movement of the hands. Hands, not arms. They're not Italians, after all. And the direction of gaze. Remember how there used to come a hot buzz of blood to your face on the bus every time you heard your name spoken by them? You believed, for one heart-jump of a moment as they repeated and repeated your name, that they were talking about you. You truly believed that inexplicably they must know you. They had recognised you as one of their own, displaced by some tragic turn of fate. The very first time on the bus, do you remember, they kept mentioning your name. Maybe you were going to be friends. How excited you were. They saw it in you, that thing you have. They spotted it, that indefinable quality of difference. Then you twigged. It wasn't you they were talking about. They had no idea you existed. Theirs was another Ashley altogether. An amusing Ashley. That's say funny Ashley. Ashley, that's a real hoot. Despite the initial bump of disappointment that had jolted you like an electric shock when you realised it wasn't you they were talking about, it still gave you a little glow of pride and connection. Made you walk with a bit of a swing for a day or two, didn't it? Maybe your name, the name you hated so much, the name that shamed you, that you would believe to be so middle class. Maybe if one of them shared it with you, maybe it was an all right name after all. Could it be that Ashley was in fact upper middle class, or even, you never know, aristocratic? Which one of them was Ashley, though? It was absurd, but you caught the name banded so often that for a shining day or two you wondered whether they could all be Ashley's. Then you considered the possibility that Ashley might be a general name they used for friend, their counterpart of the ugly mate that you heard every day in your concrete playground just streets away from their stone quadrangle. But then you twigged again. There was no Ashley. Ashley did not exist. There was only an actually.